Hi, my name is Sarah. I'm 27 and I have a story to share with you. This is one of the scariest things that has ever happened to me. It's a bit of a long story, so stick with me. I grew up and went to school in a small town in Ohio. It was your typical quiet, rural, white neighborhood where everyone knew everyone. Not much to do. In fact, I'd go as far as to say that life was boring. At 18 years of age, I had enough. I needed more excitement in my life. I wanted to move out, to start a new life, meet new people, and get a better paying job. So, one day, I sold my car and a few other belongings I had, and moved to Portland, Oregon. I loved the city. The noise, the cars, the lights. I loved it all. A place so different to my town and just everything I was looking for. Shortly after moving, I got myself a job, fairly close to my apartment at a local store, and started doing the night shifts. The pay was good, and it was really close to my place, so I was lucky in that sense. Surprisingly though, the night shifts weren't as busy as I thought. Ten customers would be the maximum per night, and for a neighborhood as populated as this one, it was surprising. I never had any bad experiences with customers, and all was well. It's important to mention at this point that I had no friends, yet. I got to know a couple of my co-workers and my boss, but only spent time with them during work hours, and sometimes wouldn't even see them at work. So, one early morning, at around 5am, I was walking back to my apartment as my shift had ended. It was still dark as it was winter here in Portland. As I walked along the sidewalk, I noticed a red car with black tinted windows, but the passenger window lowered. I saw a glimpse of a man, middle-aged, bearded, handsome dude, staring at me. I'm really shy and, like many introverts, staring back at him would never be an option. The last thing I wanted to do was start up a conversation with a random man in a dark street at 5am in the morning. As I walked further from the car, I could feel his eyes on my back. I knew he was staring at me. I walked as calmly as possible and got to my place shortly after, exhausted I never even gave a second thought to the man in the red car. I went to sleep. I was living alone in a fairly spacious three-bedroom apartment, with the ground floor all to myself. There were two bedrooms upstairs, but they were currently empty, and so I was alone. The neighborhood was not so great. My apartment was on the ground level, and my bedroom window faced the main street. A dumpster sat less than two car lengths away, where homeless people would often rummage. Before I get to the scary part, let me tell you about my fear of big cities. As a small town girl, my biggest fear in a big city was getting kidnapped, and then raped or sold to sex trafficking gangs. My mum would always bang on and on about the dangers of big cities, and this really stuck with me. From the day I arrived, I was always paranoid. And if a random man stares at me for a little too long, I'd have a mini panic attack. So, about one after I went to bed, past 6am now, but still dark outside, I heard a tapping at my window. My back was to the window and my eyes were now wide open. As I already said, it was still dark outside. I sleep with my lamp on, and my worn-out vertical blinds were missing a slat, causing a huge six-inch gap. So I knew that whoever or whatever the source of the tapping was could see me laying in bed as plain as day. The tapping was brief, maybe five or six taps. So I spent the next five seconds or so frozen, Bizarrely trying to convince myself that it was something, anything else but a person, watching me and tapping on my window. 
may be an animal. Remember, my back was to the guy, so I sat up slowly, rubbing my eyes and pretending I was too groggy to hear him. I stood up and hazily made my way out of my bedroom as though I were going to the restroom or something. Once I was out of his sight, I ran straight to the phone to dial 911, considering whether to forget any embarrassment of being in my t-shirt, underwear and socks and bolt out of my front door, which was out of sight from the intruder. I just wasn't sure I could outrun whoever it was or whether anyone would help me if I couldn't, considering nobody really speaks to each other in this big city, unlike my small town where everyone talks to everyone. Before I could make a decision, I heard the loud pop of my window being pried open. I thought my heart would jump out from my chest. At the same time, I could hear the operator trying to get my attention on the phone. I quickly told the police my address to get here quickly as there was an intruder trying to get in my house. I told them to hurry up and that I'd be in the bathroom. At this point I was scared and my heart was racing so fast I thought I'd pass out. There is a police station close to my apartment, so I knew it wouldn't be long before they arrived. I stormed into the bathroom and locked myself in. About a minute later, the man was at my bathroom, banging on my bathroom door. I was leaning against the door, holding on for dear life, hoping that it wouldn't break. Two minutes later, I heard the police sirens and almost immediately, the police entered my apartment. I heard the loud footsteps and all the commotion, but I didn't come out. I heard them screaming and yelling at the man to put his hands up and get on the floor. I still didn't make any noise. I stood there, leaning against the bathroom door, praying that everything was okay. The commotion quietened down and a policewoman knocked on the bathroom door after about 10 minutes, quietly telling me that it was safe to come out. I opened my door a few inches and peeked out, still terrified. The policewoman took a lot of information from me. I told her everything I could remember, including the man in the red car from earlier. She told me that they arrested the intruder and that he was outside and asked me if I would know him by any chance. To my absolute shock and surprise, it was the same man from earlier in the night in the street, in the same red car. They arrested him and took him in for questioning, and he went to jail for attempted robbery, home invasion, and stalking. Turns out, he first saw me on the 14th of January, which is the first day that I arrived in Portland. Today it's the 27th of January. He confessed that every single day that I was in Portland, he would follow me around. He knew my work hours, my address, my workplace, and even followed me to the nearby gym that I signed up at four days ago. He never shared his plans or what he intended on doing with me. The police did not find any weapons on him, which is so weird. The police later told me, however, that he has a history of mental disorders and schizophrenia. He's always had problems of not taking his medication and has been arrested multiple times for having manic episodes. So I guess he wanted to kidnap me? I don't know, but the fact that he had no weapons on him whatsoever it's so weird to me. So that's my story. I moved out to a different, safer neighborhood and I'm now on the 27th floor. I'll likely be keeping my job because it pays so well and as an introvert, I like the quietness of the night shift. Sometimes though, I wonder if I made a big mistake by moving to a big city as the introvert shy person that I am. Maybe the small town suits me better. Well, either way, this incident doesn't help me at all. I hope you enjoyed my story. Stay safe out there people, and see you next time.